Good day, uh, great men of God. And my name is Abraham Manassin. Today I want to talk about being a man of faith even during these difficult times. I just want to spend some time and try to, to encourage you during these trying and, and difficult times. And I'll give you some few things that you might use or some few advice that we can take that will help you uh, as you go through this challenging time. As I'm talking right now, a lot of people, they are afraid, they are living in fear. They are afraid or living in fear, they are afraid of uh, losing their source of income. Some of them are afraid because they will lose their jobs. Some are afraid because they may lose their health. And some people are afraid of the virus and and some, they may even lose their relationships. Quite a number of things that can make people being afraid. Those who have businesses, especially small businesses, they are afraid that they may lose their businesses. So their fears could be really genuine. And let me say this to you. You may lose everything in your life. You may lose your business. You may lose uh, your job. You may lose whatever you may lose. But please, 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 do not lose your faith. As Paul says to Timothy, keep the faith. And I want to encourage you also, keep the faith. No matter how difficult and how challenging the situation could be, continue to trust and believe that God knows what he is doing. This situation could be new to you and me. This situation is new to our leaders. It's new to our pastors. It's new to... Almost all of us, it's new to us. But guess what? It is not new to God. Our God is an all-knowing God. He knows everything. This situation doesn't take God by surprise. He knows what's going on. And God promises us that he will be with us. Whatever we go through, God will always be there for us, no matter what we are going through in our lives. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. All the temptations, all the situations, all the trials, all the difficult times that we are going through, Paul says, it's common. <laughs> it's common. But because you face the challenge by yourself and you feel like your situation is just unique, your situation is just worse, your situation is just hopeless. Paul says it's common. I like what he says next. He says, God is faithful. Whatever God has promised us, whatever God said he will do when you go through challenges, he's very faithful. He never changes. Whatever he has promised us, he will fulfill it because he's faithful. He's faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. God knows what you can, you can, you can bear. He knows. He knows my strength. He knows my weaknesses. He knows your strength. He knows your weaknesses. When he allows the situation to come, he knows that you will overcome. He knows that you are more than a conqueror. Any situation that comes to you, God allowed it. If God wanted to stop it, he would have stopped it. He would have stopped it. God is almost like the, the, the security guard right at the gate. He, he, he assesses what he allows to come into your life and what he should stop. Let me tell you, there are a lot of situations that God has stopped. There are a lot of things that God has not allowed to happen in your life. If you could see in a spiritual realm, what happens during the night when you're asleep? You'll be so amazed as to how many things that God has stopped and he did, not, he did not allow them to happen. So when a situation happens, let's know that God knows that it is not beyond our ability. And Paul continues to say, but with a temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to 
enjoy. In other words, he says there are two options here. God can provide a way for you to escape it. He may provide a way for you to avoid it. Or he will let you go through it and enjoy it. You have enough strength to enjoy it. You have enough strength to enjoy it. So don't allow fear to overcome you. You know, always when we get afraid, there are two things that make us get afraid. When you're afraid, there are two things. Number one, it's because you're afraid because you feel like you have lost control. When you lose control, fear takes over. <laughs> when you're not in control, then you live in fear. Number two, you are afraid because there is something that you do not know. There is something that you do not know. Let's remember, fear is not from God. Paul says to Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit and fear is not from God. So let's not allow fear to overcome us. And the devil knows. If the number one weapon that the devil uses in people's lives, it's fear. And Jesus says something in the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 27. He says when the strong man comes, when the, the man comes to steal or to take or to destroy, the first thing when he comes to the house, the first thing that he does, he binds the strong man of the house. And once the main man of the house is bound, then it's free for all. He can do anything he wants. And let me say this to you as a man of the house, as the husband in the house, as the father in the house. If the devil can get you and make you feel afraid and he scare you and intimidates you, your kids will live in fear your wife will live in fear. The people that you live with in the house will live in fear because you are the main strong man of the house. So if the devil can bind you, if the devil can get you, it makes it easy for him to get anybody in your house. Let's allow God to be in control. You as the man of the house, you are the king of that house. You are the priest of that house. You are the main man of the house. You have to instill confidence. Instill confidence in your kids. Instill confidence in your family. I'm not talking about self-confidence, but I'm talking about the God confidence. Let them have confidence in God. Have confidence in God. Have faith in God. Trust in God. Let them know that God is still in control. God is still in control. And there are some few things that I want to suggest to you that you can do during this period, during this difficult time. Number one, stay connected. Connect with other people. Connect with God. Stay connected. Stay connected through prayer. Communicate with God. Communicate with God every day. Let God know what's in your heart. If you are fearful, tell God that, God, I am living in fear. Don't isolate yourself. Meet with other Christians. How do you meet? You can pick up a phone and call them. You can meet via Skype or Zoom or whichever way. Or Google Plus, whichever way that you can connect with them. Make sure you connect with people. Talk to people. Share your fears with them. Share your doubts with them. Let them know what you need. And there are brothers and sisters who will always be there for you. Who will be willing to connect with you. The most important thing is, Here's what I found. stay connected. Stay connected. Make sure that you stay connected with other Christians. Make sure you stay connected with your brothers, with your cousins with your sister, with your mom, with your grandma, with your aunt, whosoever, stay connected with your uncles, whosoever you need to be connected with, stay connected. Make sure that every day you make a call and talk to somebody. Don't just isolate yourself and hide in the room. If you have life groups, like, you know, if you are a member of a life group, make sure you stay, stay connected in the life group. And some of them, they meet on Zoom and other different ways. Stay connected, that's the most important thing. Stay connected with God. Stay connected with other people. And number two, I will suggest that minimize watching news. 
Because what's going on in the news right now, they're just instilling fear. They keep repeating and showing you the same videos. They, they keep on showing you the same thing that you have seen. You see people dying, you see coffins, and they just keep on instilling fear in you. And if you keep on consuming the, uh, that kind of news, all you'll have in your mind is a virus and fear and fear and fear. Remember, the Bible says, so faith comes when we keep on hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And let me tell you that fear also comes through hearing. So you choose what you hear. Whatever you hear most, that's what will overcome you. If you always keep on listening to fear, 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 you also always be living in fear. Minimize watching the news. There are a lot of things that you can watch on TV. You can watch other speakers or preachers. You know, people who speak against fear. Always learn more on how to overcome fear. And that will help you a lot. That will help you a lot. Remember, Jesus said something in the book of John chapter 16, verse 33. He said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many, many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Take heart. Jesus has overcome the world. There is peace in Christ. No matter what you're going through, no matter the challenges, no matter the difficulties, when you go to Christ, when you go to Christ, there is always peace. And Jesus says, occupy until I come. Keep yourself busy. Don't focus on the negative. Keep yourself busy with something. And that's number three. Keep yourself busy with something. Maybe this could become your new normal. You know, start something new. Develop new habits. Replace the old habits with something new. Don't just sleep the whole day and eat and, and do nothing. If there is something, some few things that you need to do, please just do them. Develop new habits. Learn something new. Learn, learn some new skills. Develop yourself. And some of you, your jobs could be absolute when you go back to work. Learn some, you make use of this opportunity to learn something new. There are a lot of, lot of, and lot of resources out there. You can use YouTube. You can, uh, you can also go online and get some, some books. There are a lot of some free books that you can get. If you need a link that shows uh, some of the books that you can get for free, please connect with me. I would be willing to share those resources with you. Remember, I always say this to people. Whatever you are going through, whatever challenges that you have in life, remember, there's always a book about it. Whether it's about your children, whether it's about your wife, whether it's about relationships, whether it's about communication, whether it's about prayer, or it's about Bible study, there is always a book about your situation. You can always find them some resources that you can use to take care of your resources, uh, take care of your, your situation. So always be engaged with the word and prayer. Be engaged with the word of, and, and prayer. Usually we always say we don't have time, we don't have time. And now most of us, we have enough time to pray. We have enough time to read the Bible. And ever since we started this uh, process of lockdown, I had enough time to go through the book of Mark. I have been able to finish the book of Mark. What is your goal? What is your spiritual goal? What do you want to achieve before the end of this lockdown? Set a goal. What do you want to do? Make prayer and God's word a priority. Make it a priority. Most of us always say we don't have time. Actually, all of us we have time. Anything that you want to do, it's a matter of prioritizing it. Once you make it a priority, you always create time for it. You always create time for it. If they could say to you, oh, by the way, there is some money or a check that are supposed to come to you. But unfortunately, that 10 million check 
has gone to, to New York by, by mistake. But he should be there by Wednesday to get it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, most of us will make a way, no matter what, will make a way that by Tuesday we are in New York. Why? It's a matter of priority. You can do anything you want as long as you prioritize it. When somebody says they don't have time, what they are simply saying is, you are not a priority as compared to other people or other things that I need to do. Study the word of God. Let prayer become your priority. Let the word of God become your priority. And if you occupy yourself with prayer, you occupy yourself with God, there will be no chance for other things. Remember, nature does not allow any vacuum space. So if, if, if you don't occupy your mind with God, the devil will occupy it. He will always bring something that will occupy your mind. And lastly, read the book, like I said earlier. Read the book. There are a lot of free online, uh, online resources that we can use that are available out there for you and me. Find something that, that can keep you busy. Develop your mind. Develop yourself. By the time this period ends, you, you, you could have learned some new skills. You could have learned something new that you did not know before. Find a book and read it. Like I said before, the number one weapon that the devil uses is fear, intimidation. And fear comes because of two things. Number one, loss of control. But number two, if you don't know something, the devil will make use of your ignorance. May God help you. May God bless you and your family. And you stay strong, like I said before. Make sure that you stay connected. Minimize watching TV. Keep yourself busy with something. Be engaged with the word of God and prayer. And lastly, read a book. God bless you. And you have a nice day. Thank you.